My name is Jesse Lewin, and I'm the chief of Mohs Micrographic Surgery at uh, the Mount Sinai Health System. Skin cancer occurs when there's damage to cells of the skin from ultraviolet radiation, for instance, from the sun or a tanning bed. What happens is the cells lose their ability to stop dividing, and they divide or proliferate in an uncontrolled fashion. Skin cancer is the most common cancer in the world. There are more cases of skin cancer than any other cancer combined. In the United States, there are more than 9,500 people diagnosed with skin cancer every day, and more than two people die of the disease every hour. There are roughly 5.5 million non-melanoma skin cancers per year in the United States, and approximately 200,000 melanomas a year. There will be approximately 7,200 people who die of melanoma in 2022. The good news about skin cancer in relation to how common it is, is how curable it is when detected early. For instance, the five-year survival for people whose melanoma is detected and treated before it spreads to lymph nodes is 99%. And you can contrast that with the five-year survival rate for melanoma when it does spread to nearby lymph nodes, where the survival rate is 68%, and the five-year survival rate for melanoma once it's spread to distant lymph nodes and other organs is 30%. So early detection is key. Melanoma uh, is a type of skin cancer that develops from cells called melanocytes. And melanocytes are the cells that create pigment and give the skin its tan or brown color. Um, when those cells are damaged, they start to grow out of control. Anyone can get melanoma. One in five Americans will develop uh, a skin cancer by the age of 70. And in terms of melanoma specifically, it's estimated that um, approximately 1 in 27 men and 1 in 40 women will develop a melanoma during their lifetime. Um, while people of any skin color can get skin cancer, people with lighter skin types are at greater overall risk. Uh, those with more than 50 moles or atypical moles, those who are sun sensitive, such as natural blondes or people with red hair, and those with a family or personal history of skin cancer or melanoma are at greater risk for developing skin cancer. However, it is important to note that skin cancer uh, does occur in patients with darker skin types. Um, and unfortunately, it's often diagnosed in later stages when it's more difficult to, to treat. Um, skin cancers uh, occurring in, in patients with darker skin types tend to occur on non-sun exposed skin with less pigment such as on the palms of the hands or the soles of the feet, inside the mouth, or under the nails. Most melanomas are pigmented, meaning they are brown or black. The best way to detect them is to look for a change in the size, shape, or color of an existing mole or other skin lesion. Sometimes there's an appearance of a new growth on the skin or a sore or a scab that doesn't heal, and that covers melanoma and non-melanoma skin cancers. 20 to 30 percent of melanomas occur within existing moles, whereas 70 to 80 percent arise on apparently normal skin. So while most uh, melanomas do make melanin or that brown pigment, there are a subset that can be pink or tan or even white, which just highlights the importance of seeing your dermatologist for periodic skin cancer screening exams. Uh, most melanomas develop um, on the trunk, the chest, and the back in men or on the legs in women. However, we do see them on the neck and the face and other sun-exposed sites. And it's important to note that half of melanomas are found by patients themselves. The majority of skin cancers are caused by ultraviolet radiation from the sun and tanning beds, which damage the DNA of cells called melanocytes. That's what triggers the, the cancer. There are also some genetic factors, like having a family history of melanoma, uh, that do predispose you. There are some risk factors that you can't change, like your age or your family history, but there are ways to lower your risk of skin cancer. Since the majority of skin cancers are caused by ultraviolet radiation from the sun and tanning beds, there are steps you can take to protect yourself from the sun's rays and, and to avoid indoor tanning. It's been shown that indoor tanning devices emit uh, UV radiation in amounts that are 10 to 15 times higher than the sun. Uh, people who use a tanning bed before the age of 35 actually increase their risk for melanoma by 75%. Um, in addition, having five or more sunburns doubles your risk of melanoma. And this is particularly important when we approach sun education and sun protection in children and adolescents. So what you can do is seek shade, particularly during peak sun hours between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., wear SPF or UPF protective clothing, 
wearing sunscreen and a wide brim hat are also helpful as well as sunglasses. In terms of sunscreen, uh, one study showed that the regular daily use of an SPF 15 or above sunscreen reduces the risk of melanoma by 50%. Um, so it's important to protect your entire body. Your face in particular is vulnerable to the sun all year. So if you can wear a moisturizer sunscreen, you know, on a daily basis, that certainly is, is helpful at preventing skin cancer and sun damage. Mohs micrographic surgery is a precise surgical technique used to remove skin cancers, which are located in functionally and cosmetically important areas like the face, um, as well as for some aggressive skin cancers that occur on other areas of the body. What we do is give local anesthesia to numb the skin and then remove the skin cancer with a margin of normal skin. The skin is then turned into slides so we can look under the microscope and see if we've fully removed the tumor. If there is still skin cancer left, we go back and remove more and look at another round of slides. Once the skin cancer is fully removed, we fix the wound by stitching it in such a way that the patient has an optimal functional and cosmetic outcome. Uh, Mohs micrographic surgery can be used to treat a wide array of skin cancers, including melanoma and non-melanoma skin cancer. Unlike uh, many other cancers, patients and doctors have a significant advantage over skin cancer in that we can see it with the naked eye. Uh, we don't need invasive tests. We don't need a colonoscopy to look for cancers. We can look on our own bodies and look at our patients' bodies and detect these. Um, and that's really advantageous because we know that uh, the best predictor of cure and uh, survival in skin cancer is detecting it at the earliest stage. The other advantage we have is our ability to reduce the risk of skin cancer by protecting ourselves from the sun and avoiding tanning beds.